What's good, YouTube, and welcome to the house. If you're a Sky Striker player, you had one of the most amazing days yesterday, followed by probably your deck being insulted 500 times. So if you've clicked on this expecting a sweating nerd to be yelling at your deck, yes, I just finished working out, and this is my only window to record. Please forgive me. Please listen to my conversation all the way through, though. I think that Sky Striker Engage, actually, after reviewing it, it just brings a similar power level to what other cards offer in this metagame currently. Yes, people want Nadir Servants Limited as well, and then Engage is somewhat searchable, even though that takes a turn, or you can dig through your deck extra with Sky Strikers, and then it's recurrable on top of that, so it's been compared to a better pot of greed. I immediately, when it peeled off, had flashbacks of Engage into Engage into Engage, getting so lucky winning wise yes is oh my gosh that's not going to be realistically happening you might get lucky quote unquote to see it turn one and then recur it and have a pretty good setup with sky strikers i do think this will be tier though and i think we need to have this conversation you and me about how this deck brings out some of the worst within some of the best duels but by the end of this video if you still like sky strikers ray is bay use code what's good five for five percent off over at amanda la palm art she has an amazing brandish Maiden set. I love the playmat. It's an actual work of art that just looks amazing. You have the sleeves, the field center, the dice, and even this custom box, depending on the one you are getting. I really love how this looks. So code What's Good 5 for 5% off. See which one works for you that supports the channel directly. And with so many moving pieces versus that estimated ship date, I might expect delays on this one, as that does happen sometimes with their studio. So do be patient. But also, speaking of time, that's kind of the issue within Sky Strikers here. Ah, a segue. Yeah, we can do that in a video. Time is actually my issue with this. The time rules changed a while back. I know I'm a boomer, but used to we got turns. We would get turn 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and actually get to play Yu-Gi-Oh! out, but that would hold tournaments up. So I get why Konami moved toward. It's the worst personal player experience, but the much better running and organizing a tournament experience overall keeping rounds going making sure the tournament's moving. So right now, we end time on end your current phase. Are you having flashbacks to tournaments right now? Looking and trying to set up, your opponent starts taking a little longer. I think there's a lot of really bad actors on, oh, I'm considering my plays. Because a lot of Sky Striker players, they tend to know their deck in and out and move in a timely fashion. I think some of those top players, they really do that. But there's huge decisions trees within Sky Striker that genuinely do do take a lot of time and then this deck naturally progresses you towards time each of the links have a floater effect to end up well it's actually not the floater effect of the links but ray has a floater effect when your links end up getting destroyed that ray will float back up out of the graveyard and then she can tag out into a different link as well and then these links have different interactions within the game so you're actually able to continue to progress your field through your opponent's turn and then chum block and then there's a card that mixes particularly well with this deck that also heads that way mystic mind so this deck naturally can last a very long time so many 30 minute game ones i recall happening and with this deck that that's gonna happen again it's going to naturally be that way and what does this deck have in its toolbox as well something that attacks direct for 1500 so you have that initial hit of 15 tag out go into 15 direct and then you send the card and you're continuing to constantly pick up your deck and do things with it inside of this deck engage as you go and search the deck and you also draw you have the pick up the deck and do that you have the area zero the top three cards make a decision if you see multiple sky striker cards in there this will probably be played more as a pure deck than an engine at this point i would think but i think in your tournament experience you're going to be playing against it a bit and then you also have kaina ah everybody's least favorite striker which is an auto win con and end your current phase this card reads if this card is special some target a face-up monster your opponent controls it can't attack until the end of your opponent's turn ah first off that helps you against dying in time second off each time you activate a strike a sky striker spell card or effect it you gain 100 life points you have an auto gain which is Oh, the win con 
in time. You're able to continue activating things quite often in Sky Strikers, and it's even encouraged within the deck system to do that as the game goes on, meaning Kaina can naturally, as you progress your game state and time gets called, oh, well, I'm going to make a Kaina, and I'm going to win here. And there's no rule against that, and this deck naturally heads that way. But then you have the bad actors. We've had huge discussions on this as a community of, okay, I'm going to think, I'm going to check my graveyard, I'm going to look at this, I'm going to consider that, and the really bad actors who end up just taking all this massive amount of consideration into what they're doing when they actually already knew what they would be doing. And that's a huge problem with Striker because of the accessibility for that really to happen. So I think that creates one of the worst player experiences in all the game where, where this deck does have its decision trees and difficult decisions on what you're going to do versus the players who really have studied every situation and know what they're going to do. That's not going to be everybody playing in a remote duel. Yes, yes, is it? I do think with remote duels, you're going to have judges watching rounds, walking in, being able to assess situations, but it creates creates this friction between both duelists of, hey, can you hurry up and make your plays? You don't want to be the duelist consistently asking somebody to do that because you feel kind of like a jerk, right? Like, hey, go ahead, play faster, play faster. But you have to almost do that always against this deck, especially with people taking their time doing so with the intention to end up wrapping you up into time and doing that. They see the clock is at, wait, it's at 28 minutes now? It's at 30 minutes now? Where's it at? Where, where's the clock? Oh, it's almost always in my favor as a striker player that is the main problem with this deck and then you end up with floodgates really backing this i remember a lot of different sky strikers ending up using floodgates to their advantage before and mystic mine is up there in the top of them and this is not to be confused with that conversation of oh floodgates are unfair or uh omni negate boards where you can't even play for through it are unfair this is not that conversation this is the conversation of people using striker specifically to end up in a favorable position for time due to the natural progression of the state that it provides if you went back in the day and you go through the tables that are called into time almost all of them had a striker player among them and that's not an exaggeration very few of them were thunder players even with colossus's armor it was typically Sky Strikers that end up there. And the decks that they did face against were revolving advantage decks like uh, you have the looping of Salomon Greats or the ability to play back with Thunder. Yes, and we're in a new metagame, but definitely Strikers on their own can end up with expansively long terms and you need to be prepared to rush your opponent on what they're doing. Not like out of their comfort zone, but when they start taking 40 seconds per play and consideration and wait, let me think, oh, this is so difficult you need to be more having a backbone and being able to push that situation rather than losing the time because this deck supports that again a lot of this wraps back around to the time rules those haven't been a big complaint i feel like so much so as we've progressed through Yu-Gi-Oh, but this is definitely one of the main decks that makes it a problem. Thanks for hearing me out on this, and what do you guys think about that? Is it just a couple people? Because I don't think it's personally that. I think this deck naturally leads towards that, and then gives the decision in a competitive game with massive prizing available at times, oh, maybe I do want to win, and I jokingly, jokingly stalled for time. This is the deck that definitely does that the most, but hopefully there's a better tomorrow with time in general. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you at least enjoyed this conversation and me pointing it out. If Sky Striker is your deck, this is not a jab directly at you per se. I get also that the deck can be difficult in terms of how reactionary and how much your resources can matter depending on the hand. And in the mirror match can be even more terrifying in that aspect. But do consider the following that that does happen in a lot of situations. And I think that's personally undeniable. Thanks for watching and at least hearing me out on this one.